people are pretty sure that that, uh, that border wall is going to be built. Whether it takes the role of a big concrete building or whether it takes the role of a, a barbed wire fence or whatever it is, I think people are pretty confident that it is going to be built. Let's, let's be very clear about this. For those that don't know, there are already masses of that, uh, of that border that are already fenced and walled off. So it's not a huge, it's not the gargantuan task that a lot of people make it out to be. And uh, I was born in West London uh, into a Muslim family. And I am now proud to say that I am a conservative. I am, I am a proud Englishman. And I am a robust Americophile. But sometimes when people meet me, they ask me, oh, Raheem, that's a, that's a Muslim name. Do you, uh, do you make the Hajj? Do you do the pilgrimage? And I say, yeah, I, I make the pilgrimage every year to the Gaylord National Convention Center. <laughs> <laughs> to be amongst people like you, the people who have made such a massive difference. You have changed the world, ladies and gentlemen. But there is a lot of the world that still needs changing. I want, to, I want to talk to the back of the room for a second, the media at the back of the room for a second. You could do better than that, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, I was in Malmo, I was in Husby, I was in Rosengard, I was in Stockholm, I was in uh, uh, these no-go zones. And actually, if you, if you want a, a little bit more about that, if you go down to the Regnery stand, downstairs, uh, I've got a book coming out on it. And I was there in these no-go zones, and I came back, and we were talking about Sweden, and Donald Trump's talking about Sweden. And I was in Paris too, and I was in Brussels and Molenbeek too. And you guys at the back, you just don't get it. You don't go there. You don't see what's going on. Get your heads out of your rears. President Trump and his, his retweets of everything by, by Britain First uh, and the diplomatic row that we've seen as a result of that. Raheem Kassam has joined me in the studio. He's the London editor of the right-wing news website Breitbart. Good evening to you. Evening. Well, why do you think the, the president did retweet those, those three tweets from Britain First? What was behind all of that in the first place? I think he saw in his feed, in his, in his Twitter news feed, retweeted into his feed by, because he only follows 45 people, I think, yes. uh, into his newsfeed by one of the people he follows. Uh, and he doesn't sit there and research who the original tweeter was or anything like that. By the way, Jada Franson has a little Twitter verified symbol next to her name as well. So saw that, saw the content, was interested in the content and, and thought this is something that people need to know about. Is this a shift? I mean, you, you might have heard Barbara there saying that in diplomatic circles in Washington, they think this is a new low. Yeah. Well, the swamp, is that, is the, that swamp, right? the swamp will always find a way to criticise uh, President Trump for anything he does. Let's, let's analyse this in, in, in real terms. You know, we've had breathless coverage of this now since it happened. Uh, his, the whole political establishment and media establishment going into overdrive, hysterical over this, right? Over tweets. An emergency debate in Parliament. Yes, but he has 45 million followers. An emergency it's debate in Parliament. Are we, are we that scared nowadays of these fringe organisations that you have to have an emergency debate in Parliament? The Archbishop of Canterbury, the Prime Minister, the Home Secretary. I mean, these are things that you do in a time of war. They're not things you do on the back of a couple of tweets. If Downing Street was a serious operation, and I'm telling you now, inside Downing Street, they, do, they are not taken seriously by people in DC, the people working in Downing Street now. If it was a serious operation, they would have gone to their ambassador and said, please would you raise with the president, with the White House, the fact that we wholeheartedly do not like these people and that is dangerous to do. Well, the ambassador has raised this as an issue, so it, we know that in that addition has to happened. Everyone else. We know in that that has happened. In addition to everyone else. But you're saying that the, 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 the number 10 is not taken as a, as a serious operation, but, but then by the same token, the President of the United States has roundly criticised the British Prime Minister on Twitter. I mean, this is... And, and this by is the way, not so he should. way to behave. It's, well, it's, by the same token, if you're saying it should be done at an ambassadorial level, the rule book, shouldn't, shouldn't that be similar? The rule book went out the window on November the 8th, 2016, when the American people decided they wanted a bombast in government, right? They wanted this. They saw it during the campaign and they elected it, right? So for him to call out the British Prime Minister, when the British Prime Minister is using this event to virtue signal, 
And you have a situation where we need a trade deal with the United States. We need that relationship. In a post-Brexit world, that is imperative. And she is flushing that down the toilet to virtue signal over a couple of tweets. Well, she, no. The, Why didn't the she pick up the phone?